This is short, it's, it's simple, and um, it's got lots of pretty pictures in it, so it should be quite, quite, a, quite an easy presentation. So we're the Vision Network, and um, we wondered, um, Andy was saying why, it, you know, there's lots of neuro techniques, but um, as a content guy, how can you help? It's very similar to what, what Mev was saying. So we make content, and we work with a lot of, of companies who, um, who we help evaluate that content for. So we're working a little bit with, um, with Nick, for example. We're going to talk about some exact some examples and we tend to so we make things from websites to um, digital units to infographics most, mostly video um, but increasingly when we're making content people are saying well they're, they're challenging us to say well what, did it really work so a lot, a lot of people that we work with have the money for some of the techniques that Tom was talking about but they do but we were thinking well how can we help and then we saw a presentation I think probably Andy organised the um, the conference I went to, and um, and I saw and we saw a really interesting piece of technology about eye tracking that we'd like to talk to you about. And on the back of that, we've, we've set up a new sort of division for the Vision Network, which is spearheaded by Nigel and and Charlie, who um, called TVN Insight, which looks at other ways in which we can evaluate content, not just with eye tracking, but with other online qual and um, social media monitoring, which you can talk to um, to Nigel about later. So. I suppose the, pre the premise was there's no point uh, making content if no one's going to see it. This is obviously a digital ad. So that's an ad um, on a screen. This is um, an opacity um, heat map. So it's the other way around to a heat map. Normally heat maps, you see the colors. This one, you just see where you're looking. So if someone's buying that ad or made that ad, there's no point. It's, it's having no value because no one's seeing it. So I know context is very important, but we're here to talk about the power of the eye tracking tool that helps us evaluate um, um, what could have been, what could have made that ad more useful? Um, so the, the piece of technology we have, which helps measure viewability, um, is an eye tracking um, tool that we that we have. It's an online eye tracking tool, um, and and it measures three things. Um, we've worked with quite a few people in the room actually on this. So the first one, it measures um, what percentage of a particular ad or particular space on an ad. So if, if you see here, you can divide it into sections. You can divide it into okay. How, how many people saw the actual quote and how many pe people saw the whole thing? And then at the end of it, you can get a percentage of, okay, out of 100 people, 50% um, of people saw that. But if it was here, maybe out of 100, 50% um, of people could see it. So you can change, very similar to what Mev did with the neuro side of it, but ours is through eye tracking. because And there's a question about um, the panels. Um, do you get told? Often when people are asked, what are you looking at? They say one thing, but when you're just looking you say something completely different. There was a, a, there's some more um, other examples of that I can, I can go through later. So salience is also the, the order, because if you're selling something, and if you, again, if you're looking at this and you were selling that message, and you went to it, and you started up here, went over here, and then went down to here, you're losing so much of the power if it's not first. So in a present, um, if you're producing some content, having that salience, uh, having the first order so be, to be the... Um, the, um, the green apple is the best place to be. And the last thing is the stickiness for how long you spend on it. And, and, and the software that we have, um, we normally see things about 10 seconds. And, and so for how long of that 10 seconds, if you're over five seconds concentrating on a single point, again, it could be this message, then that's the right kind of ad to, or, or piece of content to be creating. Um, how, how does it work? So it's a bit big brotherish, isn't it? So if you've been to, to Iris, um, if you've been... Um, through Iris in the, in the airport, it's very similar. You you calibrate your eyes, and then it uses the um, embedded webcam on your on your laptop, and it just and it follows your eyes from 18 different shots a second. And we normally do that for about 10 seconds. It's a bit it, it's a bit he's a bit terrifying that guy. In fact, that's who we bought the technology from. So I'm not sure how that's going to work, but it looks like Silas from um, Da Vinci Code. But um, so we worked with Nick because um, Nick. Um, well, anyway, his client said, okay, I've got all these out-of-home ads, and they all look pretty much the same. Forgive me. They all look pretty much the same. And they asked Nick, which one should I use? And so Nick gave me a call and said, which one shall I use? And then we did it, um, and then we, um, we plotted areas of interest. And this is the interesting thing about the, the, the next interesting thing about the, um, the software, which is it's not just the, holistically um, how you're gazing, but, it, we can, but you can actually... Um, um, divide it into areas of interest. So the message, which we're going to analyze in a minute, the can, the bowl, the logo. And so then you could look at all of these with the same person. Again, the panel's the same person. It's, a, it's an online panel, and you could um, um, and, and normally get five to ten seconds to look at it. 
Um, and then um, this is what came out. So very similar ads, very similar numbers, but there is a difference. And when you're, and when you're spending a lot of money on deciding which out-of-home ads to put on, you'll see it, you'll all see it tonight, I guarantee, because it's everywhere. Um, you know, well done. <laughs> so, um, you know, this one did a bit better. So it did 10% better, I guess, than every, everything else. And, and there's some obvious takeouts here that I think um, you found, didn't you, Nick? So it was the idea that, and this isn't <laughs> the most creative example, but it's good because it's not creative, because little things make a big difference. Um, so having the, was it the tombstone that it's called, isn't it, makes a big difference. And having, um, and, and obviously it's a cold day, red is a much better colour than the blue. So simple changes make, and it's exactly what you said, Mev, simple changes that add, you know, if, you, if you, we didn't know it being changed, you couldn't actually see what, what changed it. So, um, and then last night on my way home, I, I saw it. So, or, or at least I saw the bit which, was, um, which we changed, which was, which, which was the red. And I had one of those feelings that I'd rarely get in advertising, which I felt I was actually helpful to somebody. So, um, <laughs> well, maybe not, you know. Um, Maybe Nick can tell you otherwise. We also work with a company, this is a bit more visual, um, called InSkin Media. It's about the advertising side of things as well. There's no point having advertising um, unless people see it. Now, what the eye tracking surveys have, have, have taught us is Comscore says that only 46% of advertising, um, of, of online advertising, can be seen. I think we all know that stat um, because it's below the fold or it's robots or whatever. Um, so, but we know through all the tests we've done with online advertising that that number is actually only 14%. So only 14% of online advertising is seen. So it's pretty important that you, um, um, that you have a tool to analyze whether your one has been seen or not. Because do you remember the first ad when no one saw that ad? That's valueless because no one saw it. So um, these guys have the opposite. They have like the biggest unit you could possibly get in skin. But... That, that's a problem as well because obviously they charge extra money for it and they have to, um, they have to prove that people have, been, have really been seeing it. So, um, I mean, you're not going to miss that ad, are you? This is something they did for Cadbury's um, because of the penguins, you know. Um, but um, since 14%, it, it, it's going to be 100%, but it needs, a bit of, it needs a technique to prove that it will be 100% and the eyes don't lie, okay? So the eyes don't lie, so using... Um, a normal heat moving heat map and an opacity heat map, you can see where, where people are looking. And you can imagine as a client, if you're, if you're pitching this to clients and, then, um, and they're, they're spending quite a lot of money with you, it's good to have a bit of evidence. I mean, I, I'm, not a new, I'm not a brain... This isn't rocket science. I'm not sort of... This is just simple stuff. It's just having something to offer to a client rather than nothing. And the nice thing about this, you could also do the areas of interest again. So not only do you know that everybody, and here we are, so everybody saw all of the ads, you know, so the whole ad. So that's obvious. And they saw it for six seconds. So it's a great ad, right, so um, to buy. But there's other stuff, like the actual products, you know, 94% of people see it. And remember, it's 14% average of seeing even an ad online. So these are great stats. And then the main Cadbury's message, which is up here, um, is you know, you're on there for two seconds, which is excellent. And then even, even the Cadbury's logo on the left, which is an inconsequential little logo, that's got you know, double what the average is for, um, for an ad. Now, again, if you're spending a bit of money on this, um, it, it's well worth having those stats. So what have we learned? We've learned... Um, so we've just got an eye-tracking tool. These guys, lots of other interesting things going on, much more complicated, but... Um, but what we've got here is that there's no point having uh, making a little bit of content. We make a lot of content if no one's going to see it. And even when you make a piece of content, it's really good to optimise where you go on that page. With the, um, with the high-end stuff, I mean, you know, if you look, I don't know about footfall, but if, if the one I saw it in on Finchley Road has got 100,000 people passing every day, 10% makes a huge amount of difference if you get it right. You know, and, oh, God. And, um, and the last one, which you saw on the... Um, on the InSkin example, if, if an ad, if one of those random ads, those run of sight ads, is worth, what, what is it, Charlie? Is it, is it about five pounds cost per thousand to buy a campaign? Did, well, well, that, but normal campaign, it's a run of sight, less, less than that even. Well, if that's worth, and only 14% of those ads are likely to be seen, if that's worth that, then how much is that worth? You know, if it's going to be seen by 100% of the people and even parts of it is going to be seen by 96. So is it going to be worth 60 quid? Is it going to be worth 50 quid? I mean, I know the answer. Maybe someone can tell me later. But it's, it's around about 
67 quid if the average is, is 10 quid per thousand. So it gives you an idea of how these techniques can help in different ways. Okay, that was my little thing. <laughs>